slight delay. Uh, welcome everybody, so really happy to see you guys here again uh, for uh, the subsequent session for uh, the next round. So uh, if you are new here, uh, just say hi on the comments below and if you are here again, uh, welcome. And also say hi uh, uh, to show that you are here and start watching. And uh, why we are doing this is because I wanted to kind of uh, educate people and really want to share the knowledge of uh, digital marketing and so video marketing. And is to ultimately is to uh, save you some time, save you some money on the marketing side and definitely scale your business in that sense. Uh, so uh, today uh, we are talking about Instagram for your business mainly on the video marketing side and uh, and also we talk about the characteristics, the do's and don'ts of video marketing uh, and the top mistakes that people make and of course ultimately uh, we will go to how to measure results. Uh, we will, we, I, I'll, I'll go through that uh, in general first uh, because it's gonna be quite thick so I need you to kind of sit to one area of your house that's quiet, put on your piece of something, write some notes. Uh, I think it's important to really write down because it's quite thick. Even I'm reading from a script that is quite thick. Lah. So hi, hi, hi Hui Fang. Yeah, yeah, I know you are very, <clears throat> I know it's empty right now, but I really want to hope that I could give you some value in it. Lah. So, okay, uh, so yeah, so today is the 18th of June. So welcome to today's podcast. Roll the intro. Oh, my bad. Wow, today, roll the intro. Hi, hi, morning, morning, Hui Fang. Uh, just wanted to kind of flash you guys in. So, uh, welcome today. Uh, welcome. Hello, Tatiana. Hello, welcome. I know you, you two are the most excited to kind of dive into it. So I'm not going to waste too much time of your time. But I just wanted to uh, kind of make sure that uh, everybody's on the same page. So today we're going to have the main topic, which is the Instagram for business. And we'll go a little bit on the story time and also the Q&A. Uh, because I went on Sunday and asked, on uh, Curious Sunday and asked a few Q&A that uh, could benefit for it. So I know Hui Fang actually asked a question that's very good that I want to share later on. Okay, so... Uh, We'll dive right straight to the topic. So today's topic is about Instagram Video 101. I think 101 sounds quite okay because uh, we will go to the basics of Instagram, then we will go into more to the video side because I don't want to dive too much because I'm not really a digital marketer, but I use whatever that I know uh, with the digital agencies that I work with applying to what I'm going to teach today. So uh, today is about all the basics. So we'll go to the table of content. Uh, these are the things that I'm going to talk about, the overall characteristics of IG, the do's and don'ts, the top mistakes, the types of functions, uh, I, I will highlight three uh, data I'll cover, the tricks that I use to optimize videos uh, on Instagram and measuring videos and the statistics in IG. And I'm a sort of like a beginner's way because I'm no tech genius, I don't know how to read those super long script, I prefer uh, to just go like just read whatever I have yeah so uh, in Instagram so you if you have a business account you should be able to see statistics uh, statistics that could help you uh, to better craft your next post and know what are people watching and what are the things that are doing well and what is not doing well uh, and I would need you before we start to change your personal account into business account first if you have a business account already then that's good but if you don't have or if your business account now is still under personal account, please make the switch right now. i give you a minute to go and switch it now because if not, you don't know what I'm talking when we're talking about the measuring of uh, statistics. So that is very important. I need you to do that for me. Okay, so the first thing is the characteristics of Instagram. Like last week, we kind of briefed through. So today, I kind of like refresh your memory first. Uh, Instagram is really about the company culture really sharing about the behind the scenes, uh, showing the branding side, uh, the bits and pieces, the teasers, and uh, just the small intricate parts that could attract people. So I highlight the word teasers is because Instagram is very 
uh, bite size. So it's like about 15 seconds to like 60 seconds max. Uh, and you notice that if, if it's talking about organic posts, you don't really need uh, call to actions. And that's the, that's the sad part because if you put, if you notice if you put links on captions, right, it doesn't, it doesn't click. So even if you click it, it doesn't work. So uh, it feels like Instagram is going to the way that is more of a visual thing. And if you want, you could pay the ad, like Instagram ad, and have a call to action from there. So if you are playing the organic game, you can't really have a call to action to say, but that doesn't mean that you cannot do that. You could still tell your viewers to go to your profile link, and that's what I usually do. Oh, hello, hello, hi, hi Eugene. Welcome to today's stream. I hope you guys are learning a little bit right now. So yeah, uh, before we go further what I've said, uh, please do share this live stream right now to help people that you think could help them. So that when they have any questions that they want to straight away ask, they could straight away ask like what Tatiana did last week. So I can straight away re rectify so you can, you know, go straight to uh, getting the answers ready. Because if not, they watch the live, then later they, when they want to ask questions, they'll be lost. Then I might reply slow, then they might lose the benefit of asking right now so they can benefit the whole community. Okay, so back to the characteristics. So uh, having that said, uh, you could create your videos or your content to tell people to say that, hey, there is a profile link. If you know, uh, in your bio, you should be able to see the edit profile and that's where you can put your website link. But the sad thing is you can only put one link. So you have to be very strategic and you will be changing it quite often, depends on what you are sharing. For me, I'll be sharing on my portfolio because I'm doing heart to hearts, my wedding videography service. So what I'll usually do is uh, send them to a landing page on my main page because the main page is where all my portfolios and also the contact us is. So it's actually much easier for them to contact, uh, but it really depends on your your style of work. Do you prefer to uh, reply your your customers directly on Instagram? Or would you prefer to have like a sign up sheet or like an opt-in sheet? So it really depends on your business model. I'm not going to detect for you. Uh, for me, it, I would prefer them to direct message me on Instagram. Reason being is because I don't, as a consumer, I don't like to jump platforms. So the moment you tell me to jump platform, I might if the loading time is slow on the website or if you have more flashy things on the other side, if you took more than 3 seconds, 4 seconds, people will just switch off and wouldn't want to contact you. So it's much easier to do a direct message, uh, which is more of like a strategy, la, if you want to call it that way. Yeah, so uh, this is the overall characteristics, more of the behind the scene, the brand, the bits and pieces, uh, not really focused on the call to action, but really just to prompt people and I'll later I'll talk about consistency also because uh, if you are consistently prompting people, then you will get the result towards the end where people will, remind, will be reminded about you. And because every day people are using Instagram, so you can't be possibly posting as and when you feel like it. Uh, that's something that I will go later towards the end. Okay, so now we know how the characteristics of IG actually works. Uh, what's the ideal time frame we're talking about? Uh, we are going to the do's and don'ts, which is right here. The do's and don'ts. Uh, I've listed five. There are actually more. Uh, do If you feel like there's more, do write in the comments below so you can help everybody. Uh, just know that uh, the, the do's and don'ts are listed to five. You don't have to remember it as a biblical quote. It's not like you must die, die, must follow, but don't have to be following. It's just that this is what the five that I did that I felt that is beneficial that you could also apply. There are more, but I'm not going to cram you with like 15 or whatever. That's just too much. La. So for one hour, I think five is good enough for you, right? So do write down because I didn't put, put, I don't have enough uh, slots to put in this uh, sticker thing that to flash. I can only flash the main one. So do write down yourself. Okay, the first do is engage with your followers. Like what I say, the social media platform is, I always like to use the analogy of you as a, as a person going into a party. So imagine you are in an Instagram party, so everybody is physically there, then you're just hanging out and stuff. 
then suddenly you as a Instagram user or like a business owner go and just sell people stuff like hey you want to buy and you don't even know them by the way you don't even know anything about them just say like yeah this is the product that I want to buy this is the product I want to buy but people will just get scared it's like oh, oh, oh who is this person it's like oh so scary like you have to be personable and that's where your personal brand comes into Instagram and it's very good because uh, personal brand shines a lot on Instagram people want to see your personality people want to see like how your company started your company personality like you know your staff it's not just about your product it's not just about your service it's about your staff yeah it's about the culture yeah it's about all these small little things that you think that is not important but people like that people drawn to that yeah so maybe spend some time really focus on what what could attract people what is the behind the scenes people that never seen before yeah if you have a certain process that is interesting like no one ever like no one that like people that don't work in that line wouldn't know then yeah just share that with them why not right i mean as long as it's not trade secret then i don't think it's you know wrong to share that yeah, yeah. number one engage your followers oh well done we found, yeah, thanks for writing down in the comments so that it could help everybody to kind of remember in case they missed it so yeah engage the followers uh when i say followers don't have to be really like followers followers like followers you if you have then it's good then you can continue to do that but if you want to grow your followers like if you want to uh if you want to engage outside of your followers what i usually do uh is i search for hashtags so if you go to your search bar on instagram uh you should be able to see uh like hashtags uh it, let me let me show you if i can show you okay I wanted to use the phone to share, but then I don't really know how this eCam work on this, so I'm just gonna share that already. Okay, so this is my. Uh, oh. Okay, this is my Instagram. This is my uh, company one. So usually, what I do is I will go to this search bar. Then okay, so this is the. Uh, my face. Okay, so this is a search bar, right? You just need to search from this. You see, this is top account, text, and places, right? We want to go to tag. So these are the hashtags that I uh, that I recently found. Lah. So based on this hashtag, if you click, these are the main poses. So what you want to do is you go to recent. Oh. Okay, you go to recent. Okay, these are the recent posts. We don't want to go top. You can still comment on the top posts, but it might be like maybe six months ago or one year ago, which are still on the top. But they might forget because the post has been like way, way like long ago already. So no point. So usually uh, you just go to all the recent posts, you know, engage with them. If they have any comments or anything, or they have any questions, uh, you could just feel free and just put your input inside. And... This is what we call engagement. Of course, it's not as intense as Facebook, uh, because Facebook, the platform is really about discussion, building a community, building a, a open channel, two way. If it's a Facebook group, uh, but for Instagram, there's no community group per se, so there's no way you could kind of do that. But there are some interest group that create Instagram accounts, uh, and that's where they are interest group. So maybe they post only things like maybe they like cars, so they just want to post car photos, car videos. Uh, that's where most of the community, more the interest be interested parties will go into that into that pool of people. And they might comment and stuff. Uh, that's where you could put in your your insights and stuff. But be approachable. Don't just throw facts to them. Nobody cares about facts unless it's valuable to them. So you know, be a decent human being and just like just give comments and you know put uh but that they are friendly, not like just stuff it to their face like this is right. It, it doesn't work. You have to slowly nurture. Like, I think the right word is nurture, so that you can engage with them. So this is what I call engaging. So do that. Yeah, was well, this one point really quite a lot? I understand, but it's like that one. You have to take your time. The next do, is stick with a theme, and a color scheme. See. I rhyme that right, quite cool right. <laughs> I rhyme that so that it's easier to understand. Stick with a theme, and a color theme. Reason being is because, 
uh, Instagram is a visual game. If you're gonna play this Instagram, it's gonna be visual. What looks good will be good or will attract people and it's important. So make sure that when you post or you have certain themes, it must be correlated. So for heart to heart, if you notice most of our posts are more peach in color, more white, because we, we like white a lot. So it's more pagey, more pastel colors. Yeah, so I think pastel is the right word. So we actually have a color board, a mood board, so that when we post, we kind of know what colors give you one. Okay, this is recent ones. If you go towards the earlier days where, you see, the colors are all over, all over the place. So when you see this kind of thing, it doesn't look very professional. It's just like, what, what am I trying to you know, share? So is it in the earlier days, it's just all different colors. I don't know what I'm posting. I mean, though the videos are good lah, for sure, but uh, it's just the color scheme not nice. So imagine your Instagram as like a... Uh, it's so important that I go close. Imagine your Instagram is like a online storefront. You wouldn't want it to be messy. Okay? Unless your theme is messy, then so be it. Then it could work. But if if it's just like Chapalang or, or for Tatiana, I don't know what Chapalang is like over the place. It's just messy. Uh, just make sure that you have at least a three to four colors that represent your brand. I mean, your logo already has some sort of colors, right? Or there's some sort of color scheme before they start creating your logo, right? Use that as a guideline, like, you know, if your logo has a red or yellow, do consider putting some colors of red and yellow related to that to paint your Instagram storefront to look decent. Focus on the first 12 photos. The rest of the thing you don't have to care because usually hardly people scroll the feed all the way down. Usually focus on the first 9 to 12 feed boxes in grids that looks uh, similar. And at least you have some sort of standardization. Uh, at least my personal preference. Uh, that, would, that would differentiate between a newbie and a professional. So if you have words and stuff, uh, they use Canva a lot. Uh, please make sure that you always use similar or the same uh, background. So that you'll be able to see the uh, like people can see the similarity of all the posts yeah so do 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 take note of that this is important okay the next do is take advantage of instagram stories and live and highlights okay so these are the three things that i will cover later on the features uh i would feel like these three should be enough for you to kind of like kickstart uh and when I say do take advantage is because Instagram has been churning a lot. And most every half a year, there will be new things coming, pouring in. And of course, they bought over, they are being bought over by Facebook, right? So they actually implement what is being implemented from in Facebook. And they're trying to kind of synergize it. They haven't perfected it yet though, but uh, they have a lot of sticker functions. Like ask a question, uh, you can use basically use the features that I mentioned to ask questions in comments. You can tell people, uh, you can use your stories to, to, to engage with your customers. And the best part is uh, stories don't have to be well produced. Uh, this is what, this is what uh, I would feel like is, is uh, something that you should take note of. Like quality is not as important as value. So if your stories or your feed gives value, is actually more beneficial for your cost, your customers. So your stories don't have to focus on how, how well you are shooting. Just make sure that you the story has a purpose and you are giving the right value, then that's good enough. And it's 15 seconds. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be well crafted. It could be just like, hey, talk to the camera and say like, hey, I'm doing this, this, this. Uh, I'll be doing a show. Any questions you want to ask me, do let me know. Blah, blah, blah. It will be easily, because Instagram make it very easy for stories to be able to reply on comments, they are driving that. And the more you keep your viewers or your followers or whoever that's on Instagram, stay on Instagram, Instagram will reward you with more viewers or more, more people that are gonna watch your uh, stuff. Lah. So basically it's optimizing your posts. Yeah, but it's a very slow process, it's organic. 
I do have to put it up front. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but there are other ways like uh, putting ads and stuff. But uh, that I won't go through later on. That uh, I did try my own and it works. Okay. Uh, so thanks Wei Fang for highlighting. So take advantage of IG stories because if you're not using then what's the point? Like uh, the features are there for you to use. And the best part about stories is right off the top on Instagram. So when you go to like you go to the top, then uh, like you go to Instagram, the first thing you see is stories. And people are fighting for the to the to, to be the first view. Because usually you frankly speaking, if you're gonna use Instagram, you're just gonna see like the five at most, then you might get bored of the stories if it's like still, then you swipe. So uh take take advantage of that. And of course there are also IGTV. Uh, I will briefly go through that uh, because IGTV is still a very fresh thing currently. Uh, when I say fresh, it's like uh, the result is not as good as I wanted. So I didn't want to go through that because uh, if it doesn't work, then what, what was the point of sharing, right? I, I tried myself and sadly not, not a very good result. But I've seen people have good results with it. Uh, and it really depends on what, what, what content you put inside. So... It's really not about stuffing how much seconds, how much minutes you want to put. But even if a 2 minute video could work better than a 10 minute, so be it. So, take note that it's not the duration. So, some videos you could consider uh, doing uh, for uh, to, if you want to go into these three types of videos. So, uh, I'll be sharing a few. I think I'll, sh I'll share six. So the first one is like I give a tour of the office, like what I say is a behind the scene kind of thing. If you just share like what I did this morning on Instagram, uh, if you never follow me, it's C Y A N C O N G. Uh, it's C Y A N C O N G. So uh, it's Sian Chong. I don't know. People call me Sian Sian Chong because I literally write the Chai. So Sian Chong. So uh, this morning I actually did a short live. Uh, live Instagram uh, thing to kind of share people the behind the scene like the set today yeah so people that follow me on both IG and Facebook now they see like the produced one but then in Instagram uh, since I can't do concurrent on Instagram right so I decided, I decided to make it like a teaser see I'm using whatever I'm teaching to share people like hey this is my set I'll be holding the camera like right here then I'll be like Oh, see, this is the, the light, and this is the camera, and this is the whole laptop setup and stuff. So, yeah. So, this is this could be one of those. The next one you could do is uh, la uh, launching of a new product, like a teaser, a short one minute or 30 seconds video that you could, you could use it for Facebook. So, do think now that you could play around. It's not like, uh, I mean, meaning is repurposed, right? So, what's the point of doing 30 seconds if you can post it in different channels? But make sure that you optimize it. So today we're talking about Instagram only. So uh, make sure that you keep it to within one minute to 30 seconds. Uh, if you really want to milk the thing, you could go to two minutes with carousel. Yeah, which I will show you later what's what's what is the carousel. Because I feel that carousel still works better than IGTV. That's my personal take. Uh, write down that in case you got questions about that. Yeah. So the next one is uh, interviews. Uh, like what I said, you want to know your staff, want to know like the brand itself and why people work for you or why you want to create this brand. Yeah, uh, people that have went through all this should be one of your talk talking topics because that what, what this is what makes your company unique is you and the people that you hire. These are the characters of the, of the office that makes your brand you. So take note of that. It's important. The next one, the fourth one, is Q&A. Q&A sessions does help. Uh, or like right now, if I have a question or you have a question, this is kind of the Q&A we're talking about. Uh, if not, it's like a frequently asked question. Uh, in both sides, if you kind of see it, it actually, it, you can actually directly solve a consumer's problem by answering certain questions. And these kind of questions you could create and make it into a highlight. Okay, I'll show you what is highlight first so that uh, when I talk about the lingo, you won't be lost. Okay, so again, this is my this is my wedding profile. And you see, these are the highlights. These, little, these four little balls are the highlights. I don't know what you can see. Yep. 
So the first one, since you can't see, is actually about who are we. So if people come into our, people come into our profile, right? I want to I want to let people know. At least that's for me, lah. I want to let people know the first thing who we are, because as you can see, how to our stories, is actually run by me and my wife. So I wanted people to know upfront who are we as a company. So when you press into who are we, right? Uh, there will be a lot of us, lah. I mean, I'm not self promoting, but then, uh, these are these are the things that uh, people want to kind of know. When who who are they working with, lah? So uh, from these stories, they'll know like our character, <clears throat> and whether they can match our kind of style, no? So uh, I wanted to kind of like let people know who we are, lah. And it's important, lah, because to me that's the what's this that's the brand that direction I'm going. I don't want to hide behind the logo. I don't want to hide behind brand, and this is how I work. So uh, this this works quite well because when people when couples met us. The first few things they will actually usually will ask them like, oh, what actually want you to, uh, let you want to contact us or let you want to hire us? Then usually they will say, oh, uh, because I've seen your your videos about uh, things that blah 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 that works. And sometimes the video is not even related to weddings. It could be some of the side projects or that they really wanted to 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 hop on. Uh, that is about us. It's like uh, we create a story about how our logo actually get started. So it's like a branding video, uh, and that that touches people's heart, and people feel it. People feel the how we wanted to do heart to heart, and why we believe heart to heart so much. Uh, if you don't show the passion, and people need a medium to see, and that's where video comes in. Okay. So the next one, yep, highlight Hui Fang. Thanks for that's important. Uh, then we go to tutorials. Uh, short tutorial videos. Uh, it could range from, if okay, I think the current trend right now, I feel, is if you could do short burst, uh, tutorials, and that would be super good. Uh, reason being is because if you have, uh, tutorials that is easy to like, what I say, Instagram is not a place to we put long chunks. YouTube is a place to put more than five six minutes, but Instagram can't. So what you do is you put one minute. One one minute of good quality that could be absorbed within a minute. If you could create this visual within a minute, that is impactful, value adding, emotion driven, then that's good. Try to do that. And in fact, you do, okay. The best part about it is because it's one minute. You don't have to crank so hard about it. Uh, if you are not confident, you could do fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds on stories. Then, of course, it's twenty four hours. And if it's stuck, it's stuck. You can just uh after twenty four hours, it's gone, right? So. You, you could use that because if you post that more often, you could see what people connect with you the most. And because all your stories will be hidden in the archive, so in case you want to refer it as like a research, you know, that's where you measure results. Huh? You want to see what works. You could refer to all your archives and see what people connect the most. But in order to see results or see how people respond to it, right, make sure that you has some sort of call to action for that particular post, then see how the post does, and if it does drive traffic or does drive drive whatever that you're trying to drive, take note on that. It could be something that you could expand more. The basic way, fifteen seconds works already. If I jack it to a three minute video on Facebook, will it work? That's where you have to test out, because you won't know because every video is very different. Every content that you drive, you drive is very different. I want you to do this kind of homework so that you are accountable for the contents you create. It's not like I post, I dump, then it's like, okay, done. But when you post and dump, you need to study what happened within that month, what posts you have created, what, what is well and what doesn't. Yeah, so short tutorials, important. Just try lah, because I, I feel like one minute and below works very well on Instagram. Anything beyond that is just messy. Like yesterday, I post one carousel, uh, short tutorials. Uh, unless you are targeted very well, like if you set the hashtag so well that people could absorb it, I would feel like the one minute actually would better. Like, uh, as to compare to uh, see the moment you pass one minute, you see the algorithm change. How Instagram throw the content to people also change. Uh, and it's very important to think of that. But it could a double edged sword. I will tell, I will share with you more about carousel later. Yeah, because uh, there is a benefit to it. If you do it correctly and if your content is good. Okay, 
So the last one is product demo, uh, or service demo. So uh, Hui Fang did a lot of that. Uh, if you're interested in ouch and uh, massage, she's the lady to go. Uh, she she does a lot of demo, it will be it live demo or recorded demo. Uh, it's actually very good so people know exactly your skill set. And is your skill set being shown live or being shown uh, on video? It's like, it's a proof. It's proof that people want to see so that that could, you know, show that you you will know what you do, what you are doing. Yeah. So that is the last one, uh, product demo. Okay, the finally we go to the next do. Wow, I want to go through that so that it's can ingrain because uh, those are important informations. The next do is be consistent. Uh, it's because, like what I said before, I come into this topic is you have to be very mindful of uh, being present on that space consistently. I'm trying to think of the right word to say, but I think that's. That should be quite close to what I wanted to say. Uh, what I personally do is I have show content pillars. Okay, I will go to those content pillars when I go to the five don'ts. Uh, but just make sure that you are very mindful that you are constantly there. I'm not saying about every day there, but make sure that at least alternate days are there. I feel like alternate days seems to be the good balance uh, of you being in the platform. Don't only go to the platform if you have only if you have, uh, if you have video to share. Go to the platform because you want to engage with the community inside Instagram. Because I think there's a very bad habit of business owners treat it as like a platform to sell, and that is wrong. That is dead wrong. And when I say say sell right, even if it's free, ah, uh, it's wrong. It's super wrong. I tell you, uh. You have to treat the Instagram profile as as you. Would you go to a place and just sell? You go to a place to meet friends, understand, you know? You have to understand that online still applies. Online, how you talk to people still applies. You, you cannot just like, oh, because it's online, I don't have a face there, then I'm just gonna like, oh, info dumb. Like, oh, okay, here's the blah, blah, blah. You should do that, do that, do that. Uh, it's less... It's more forgiving, but then it's a little bit irritating if it's just too much. So you have to be open to, you know, this kind of thing rather than just go there and hard sell. Yeah, so uh, be mindful of that and uh, be consistent, but be mindful of what you're posting. Yeah, and of course the next thing is be mindful of the posting time. Uh, of course, uh, there will be like some golden ratio time that you can post, but uh, what I feel work, work the best is right before lunchtime, where, so where people you know, uh, eat their lunch break, then they see their post, or right before they sleep, it's about 9pm, 8pm will be the best, because it's after dinner, they might be chilling on the sofa, they might be watching a show, but they're not really paying attention, uh, they might be... No, scrolling through so that's where the traffic usually are the highest and also the sad thing is and that's also the most competitive time so you really you have to balance la, uh, give and take yeah other platforms work differently uh, I will cover in future but Instagram this is how it is right now okay the next do is end of the day is have fun with it have fun with using the platform uh, I don't want you to go to the platform and Treat it as like a business kind of thing. Uh, it should be fun. It should be a process where you engage. Because you are talking to real humans, you know. It's just that uh, it's through a phone screen. And it's supposed to be n not dreadful. Because if you are dreading it, then you are doing it all wrong. Uh, you have to uh, be in the community. Like, I think when you put yourself in the community and when you help people or when you are giving a solution... Uh, be it product or service. Uh, end of the day, we are all trying to help people and make it into a sustainable business. Uh, and if you have the right heart to help people, then it should be fun for you. So, uh, end of the day, make sure that you are you know, giving the best that you have uh, and not going there to make sales. 
Because the moment you go into the social media to make sales, right, then that's wrong. That's, that's just not a healthy mindset. Lah. Yeah. So make sure of that. Okay, so these are the five do's. So before I go to the five don'ts, I uh, just wanted to kind of introduce the email list again. This is the email list I'm talking about. Uh, we, uh, we are having this uh, email <clears throat> list uh, to share weekly nuggets and uh, weekly videos uh, regarding video marketing and stuff. Uh, sometimes it's related to the live stream, sometimes it's not. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please do the, scan the QR code right here uh, for your viewing pleasure. So every week, I will give you uh, weekly nuggets. Okay, so we go, now we go to the... Okay, if you miss this email list, please let me know in the comments below. Yeah, I will get back to you on that. Okay, thanks for the like. Uh, thanks for the heart, guys. So really very happy. Yeah, fun heart. Awesome. Okay, now we go to the don'ts. The don'ts of Instagram. Okay, uh, the first don't I'm going to go through is... Uh, you don't don't ever post like you feel like it. You have to plan it and you have to be strategic. Uh, then that's where I will introduce the content pillars. Uh, I think I have already went through content pillars, but I'm just going to breathe through, through. Oh, thanks Wei Fang. Thanks Wei Fang for signing up. Uh, I hope the weekly things are very useful for you because uh, that's where I usually plan ideas from and see uh, what you guys would want to learn more. So whatever you guys ask more, I will create more towards that. Because I'm serving the community and that's what I want to do. So let me know what else I should cover. Then I will cover in all channels, including the live. Okay, the first don't is don't, don't just post because you feel like it or if you want to sell something or you want to you know, introduce something. Be in the platform, be engaged in the community constantly have a content pillar strategy. And what I say content pillars are, imagine you have three or five pe types of people that you want to sell. Who are the most likely people that will gonna engage you for your service? Give yourself 30 seconds to think about it. You know, write it down. Write it down right now. I give you a chance to write it right now. Because if, if you don't write it down later, you'll forget. So write down who, you, who do you think would likely to use your service? The types of people, the age group, What's their psychographic? What is their what's their current mindset? Are they having any issues? Uh, is it for Hui Fang, I would say that uh, is there people that are in the office, stuck in their desk? What's their age group like now having this back problem? Is it uh, people in their uh, elderly age that uh, wants to, you know, they want to uh, they're having back issues? Or is it uh, a teenager that fell down? Then now there are some issues on certain things. Yeah, think not of that. Now these are the age group, and you have to treat it these content builders like them. So what content would benefit them? Because not all your things would solve that particular content builder issue. So you from there you can split up. So you got like five. Then imagine okay the, the three videos that I have shared, uh, on the previous live stream. Do you still remember? R write down. Yeah, write down. The, the three types of videos that I shared on the previous live stream on the comments below. I want to see whether you can still remember. Then from there, you you plug this type, three type of video into the five content pillars. So this three, you, that means you got 15 already. Right? You got 15. One week you post one. It can last a few months just based on that. And I want you to, do, to plan these content pillars because I think it's easier, clearer for you to sell to the right people. Okay, I use the word sell, which is wrong. Actually, you, you could share the right people, which is important. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't post it when you feel like it. Have it planned. Be strategic. Very important. It's very important. Yeah. Hui Fang, uh, busy working professional. Pain here, pain there. Yep. Yep. Uh, mature folks starting to... Yep. More health conscious. See, these are the people that you should be selling or you should be sharing. Yeah. So... Uh, if you guys know the three uh, types of videos, let me know. Uh, if you don't know, please write I don't know on the comments. Then I could refresh your memory from there. Okay, the next one is don't uh, anyhow post without thinking of the theme of the feed. That means we are going back to the theme again, you know. Stick to the theme. 
uh, again, I'll want to refresh your memory. Just don't anyhow post with, without thinking how the feed will look like because it's a Instagram short front. Yeah, so just don't anyhow yeah, do that because it's just look very messy, very not, not very tidy. Okay. The third don't. Don't use, don't just use to post feed only. Yeah, so um, the, the bonus is the, like what I said, the stickers. So I would like to introduce these stickers. Okay, let me do a sample. Okay, so for example, I take a photo of the keyboard. Let me go to the stories. Okay, so this is the, this is the uh, stories, right? This is where you do the stories. So, you can just uh, take a photo like this. You see, this is the stickers. Stickers is the one with the third one. So, fonts, then effects, then stickers. So, if you click the stickers, these are the stickers. These are the popular stickers. Uh, you can put GIFs, you can put time, uh, you can put all these uh, gimmicks. So we, we scroll down, and this is the part where I would want you to focus on. Okay, These are the stickers that you should go ahead and play around with it. Yeah, I want you to... Uh, this, is it. this is the DM us. This is the latest one. I think last week just came in. So you click on the DM me, you can ask people to ask you something. See, DM me, type something. This is where you do the engagement. It's very handy right now. Uh, this is not just one of it. There are other stickers like uh, countdown. There are questions that you could get people to ask. Uh, if you click on questions, you can let people ask you question, ask me a question which are all engagement tools. And when I say engagement, this is one of those ways. Yeah, this is self-create engagement. Self-create engagement so that you could engage with your, you invite people to uh, talk to you. It's like a two-way street rather than you giving out information. A lot of us think the social media is just giving out information, which is also true, but you need to ask them back, like, hey, what do you guys think about it? Let me know. And this is why I always uh, push for engagement in life. And I always ask you guys, if you have any questions on the comments, let me know because I'm always monitoring the comments. And I know when you guys ask me questions. I'm not just rambling the information, but I would want you to think with me as a process. And every business is very different. So if you got questions for your own particular areas they are looking at, like Eugene is doing SEOs. I'm not sure about his Instagram, but... Uh, if he's doing so, the approach as to compare to Hui Fang's and uh, uh, compared to Tatiana is very different. So uh, I hope that if you have any in particular to your trend, your industry, that you have anything that you want to apply on Instagram, do let me know so how we can craft it according to what we are sharing today. Okay, so the next don't is don't use... Uh, don't use... Instagram solely for promotion. It's not a place where you put salesy things. It's for you to be organic, be behind the scene, be how you created the brand. You know, it's about branding, positioning, and engagement. Yeah, it's not for you to just throw stuff. Yeah, Eugene, I know you're very busy because while wow, you are all over the place, I understand you, you are Twitter, then you are all, you are Facebook, WhatsApp. Facebook group, <laughs> I understand, totally cool. I'd rather you focus on the things that you are already doing rather than you stretch yourself too hard. Lah. Because like what I said on the pre last, week's, uh, uh, last week's live stream, I myself can only run like three max. So for me, it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. This is the three that I stretch myself. YouTube is like a bonus for me because I found a pocket of time that I could use. And the YouTube is uh, for me to put longer contents because I wanted to cater that just for that and to educate people on longer contents, watching it on their own time while playing with the SEO, Eugene's highlight word, SEO for the Instagram site. Yeah, so uh, that's another thing. 
which I'm not sure if you guys are interested on the YouTube, how to optimize for YouTube, uh, let me know in the comments uh, below. Uh, let me know whether I should cover that also because recently I've been applying it and I think I have seen better results on that. Yeah, I think that could help. Uh, yeah, Eugene, I... Yep, you have been spreading around the, the whole community, which is good. Uh, you are you're engaging, engaging with people, uh, which, is a, which is a good thing. Uh. Uh, and I've seen that you just discovered that, so uh, good job. I hope you are having good results with that because I've seen that you posted some results and it's quite good. Okay, the next one is don't use, uh, uh, don't include links in the caption of your post. Because uh, when you post on Facebook, then you want to use the old captions for your Instagram right, most of the time, if I assume. Uh, don't ever post any links on your captions. It doesn't work. Can't click also, it doesn't work. Tell people on your stories to go to visit your profile link or tell people to go to your profile link through the captions. Redirect them. Chances is yes, you will lose customers because they are unable to, they are having issues going to the link or they can't find stuff like that, uh, which is a sad thing about Instagram. La, that you still can't optimize that part. So, uh, so at least don't include things that people think they could press then later and I got frustrated. Yeah, so this is one of the things that you should take note of, so don't ever do that. I want to kind of clear the don't faster because we are already 10.48 and I don't want to waste your time. So uh, continue to uh, comment on the comments below so that I can constantly engage. Yep, don't ever post links on your captions. Thanks, Wei Fang. Okay, now we go to the types of functions. Uh, we are going through this tree. Let me see whether I have uh, put it under. Yep, we are going to through these three types of functions, which is IG stories, IG highlights, and IG feed. IG feed will be the least important because I think everybody will have to post on IG feed. Uh, we will go to IG story first. So, uh, the top functions or the type of functions are the stories. Uh, stories is important because stories have the highest engagement level up to date, and. Uh, stories have higher viewerships as to compare to your feed, uh, if done correctly. Uh, it might not have a high, it, it will not be searchable because only followers can see, but people would hang around stories higher as to compare to your feed. Uh, because the, the sad thing is, you know, feed only appear once, then once you swipe, it's gone. Uh, the very sad thing is you are unable to sustain that. So uh, once it's after like, after 48 hours, your post most likely will be, you'll die down. So your, your story is about 24 hours. So the viewership on its stories is higher, at least from what I know. And most of the things that this one, I try to optimize the stickers, uh, try to have a call to action in your stickers or, and generally just engage, share your daily stuff, you know, it doesn't have to be well produced. Just go straight to your phone. Take, like, hey, okay, so now we are doing this, we are doing this. Uh, this is the behind the scene and stuff. You should try that. I mean, it's, this is just one way that I, I use stories. Uh, if not, it's usually just uh, some gentle information dump. Or if I have new posts, I would use my main post to share. Okay, so again, I cannot say I need to show because if I don't sh show, then you might get lost. <laughs> So, uh, so okay. For example, again, this is my post. So if I have this post, I would go to share. Oh, yeah, wrong. Go to this this arrow here. Every time I have a new post, I go to this arrow. Then you can add to story. You see, add post to story. Then you can post in your story. Then you can write stuff at the bottom or something. You can shift this wherever you want. To, to write about the things that you want to share. And this is to redirect. So I always think of ways to how people could see this post if I'm putting a feed to redirect them to the, the post. Uh, it's important because you are trying to fully utilize the platform, try to play around with the chess pieces. Okay. Oh, Tatiana. Yep. Very good. I really hope that you really learn a lot. I still have quite a bit, so I want to kind of skim through that. Okay, next thing is uh, live. Uh, Instagram Live. Instagram Live, 
it's not as good as Facebook. Like right now you're watching Facebook, right? Uh, the sad thing about Instagram Live is hopefully in future where Facebook uh, fully milk because they are still under in Facebook and they are trying to slow, not say slow down Facebook, uh, slow down Instagram. Facebook is trying to catch up with Instagram. Uh, but the live up to now, Facebook is still the best. YouTube is second in terms of adoptability and how well it being functioned because the sad thing about Instagram live is you are unable to scale it up. Up to now, you are unable to make it look nice. You cannot use camera, you cannot use whatever. It's just going to be on your phone. And the sad thing about using a phone is very poor audio quality. If I'm going to teach this and the audio is like shit, you are unable to hear me clearly, then you will, you will switch off. So I don't want you to switch off. I want you to pay you to pay attention. So doing this makes it much easier for me to teach. If I'm going to use it on Instagram, it's very muffled, the voice, and you're unable to scale, your camera is just lousy, then it's just over the place. Then uh, you, it's not very shareable. If you notice, uh, Facebook have a share button very easily, really available. So uh, if you're watching right now, do share this live stream on your, to your peers, because I really don't want them to miss. If not, I have to repeat the whole thing again, which is quite sian. Uh. If I could engage them straight away right now, if there are any questions, It'd be very helpful for them. So do share this live stream right now. Yeah. So you see, it's so easy to share. There's like at the bottom right or something, you could be able to share. But Instagram, you can't share. It's not very handy to share, uh, which is a sad thing because that you are unable to, to go higher reach. But there's a workaround to it. There's a workaround to it. Uh, now I'm going to share the workaround to it, which is if you cross share, if you cross live stream, that means if me, uh, for example, me and Tatiana, we're going to do a live stream hosting together. So you usually you see live stream is top and bottom, right? So I'm top, then she's at the bottom. Then uh, we will engage in that sense. So it's in the cube. So if she... Okay, so one person has to be the host, right? So if I host the stream, then if she joins, I can request her to join me as a stream party. Then become two people, right? So Instagram right now could only allow you to have two people, right? So when I'm having live and she's joining me live, she will be live also. And her followers will see that, you will see her live and seeing me live also. So end up you are merging two followers into one live stream and that's where people get to know you more. That means new followers lah. If, if they happen to see and like your content, then they are like, hey guys, whoever that's watching from Tatiana's side, please follow us, then you can cross share, cross promote. Uh, I think it's the only thing that I found that is very useful for IG life. Uh, other than the quality and everything, just blah, just not up to par. And it's very bad for learning. Education don't ever do live stream because it's just poor across the board. Um, but if you are doing casual sharing, you know, like going a, going, uh, having a walk to the park or uh, walking your dog to the park and you want to share something live, yeah, then it's very good. It's very uh, intuitive. You can ask questions right now. You can ask questions on Instagram Live, uh, which is having a tab directly just for you to ask questions. And the questions will be flashed, like what I'm flashing, like Tatiana. You can literally flash on the live stream. On the on the channel, on the people that are, people that are watching could also see the question, which is good. Uh, that increased engagement, that increased watch rate. So like what I said, higher more people watching, higher watch rate. You do. You know, uh, Instagram would reward you with more viewers. So this is one way lah, you could go. Then the last thing is feed. Feed is important, as important as stories, because feed is your storefront. So as much as you want to leech on stories, it only lasts 24 hours and it can't be viewed ever again, unless you put in highlights, unless you want to keep it. You know? So to me, the stories, are be, uh, the, the stories for them will be able to keep it as highlight so in case you want to flash your stories in future highlight but the highlight please have a purpose to it don't just create highlight for the sake of keeping it don't write archives in there because you have an archive behind the scene where people cannot see so having a highlight is to uh, okay the highlight usually two things are who are we and also FAQs so people want to buy stuff they really want to ask questions right? so if you have answered directly that means you anticipate their you know so imagine it's a store fr storefront and people want to ask questions. You this is a very good use of using highlights. 
Yeah. So uh, do think of that. Okay, so these are the three types of functions. Okay, we go to the tricks that are used to optimize videos. So how we present ourselves is important. So uh, these are the, the, the tricks that I use are hashtags, tagging, and stickers. Stickers I already went through before, I'm not gonna dive again. Hashtags is like what I say, you go and search for the hashtag. Uh, study how hashtags works. That means, okay, the golden rule is get videos, okay, find hashtags that's related to your topic, okay? See the, okay, once you type hashtags, right, okay, you go to hashtag, you go search, that if you type maybe uh, coffee, then a lot of suggestions, right? uh, that means hashtag coffee, hashtag uh, coffee and beans, hashtag coffee, blah, 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 there's a lot of hashtag. Notice the number of posts per hashtag. That means how many people post based on their hashtag. Don't ignore the 1 million and above. They are useless. It only works for 1 million and above unless you are a celebrity or if you are you have a very you have very strong followers in your account. Then you could be that particular hashtag top view. Top. You know the top and the reason? Yeah, you might be in, on top. But if you don't have much followers like all of us here, uh, I would suggest you go to find uh, hashtags that is around the 100,000 range, 100 to 200,000 range, 300 if you are stretching it a little bit. Then later you find hashtags that is below 100,000, that means like 50,000, 60,000, 30,000. Then you find hashtags that is 10,000. That is when you put hashtag, okay, imagine hashtag like planting seeds. So you are planting seeds in different crop. So if you post Okay, if you plant it into a smaller crop, chances of you being found is higher. As so compared to like a 1 million chunk, you won't be able to find yourself because you are in like a pool of people. So I usually find hashtags that are within these three range, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. So there's three groups. Yeah, this is how you spread, but some hashtag works, some hashtag it doesn't work. So you have to take note of that. Not all hashtags work. So you have to study. You have to, if you're playing organic, this is how you're supposed to do. You kind of throw the bit a bit, try, see how it works. I found a few. If not, you study your competitors. See what are your competitors hashtagging and how much likes do they even get. If the likes, share, comment ratio is reasonably high, then that could be some hashtag that you could pay attention to. Like, Wow, he got like 1,000 followers, but he got like 400 likes, right? Like, that's 50%, that's very high. Take note of this kind of people, because I think they manage to optimize, and of course, make sure that they are not paying ads. If they are paying ads, or if you feel like they are paying ads, like, their followers only 1,000, but their likes is like, what, three, 4,000 likes, means they might be paying ads, so pay attention to that also. Yeah, but it's good to study your competitors, so that you could really uh, understand how uh, people like photos on Instagram. You could even get someone to watch for you, like how does this photo look like? So when you scroll on feed, what are the things that catch your eye? This is all a visual game. Make sure that you are strategic. Okay. Okay, then we go to the uh what's the last one? Yeah, stickers. Stickers are already covered. So if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. Okay, measuring video statistics in Instagram, the last one. Uh which is an uh, important tool. So uh, let me share with you the, the tool that I use. Uh, the good thing is, the thing is in Instagram. So go to your Instagram, uh, go to your post. So this is, this is my post. Uh, you go to the view insights. Okay, so if you are in, if you are a business account, you have this additional thing. Okay, so this will show you the, the likes, the comments. Then the bookmarks. Okay, we usually ignore that. Lah. So, okay, you see, they actually tell you who visited your profile, how many visits and your website. So, this was yesterday. Okay, the discovery part is important. Take note of all these uh, keywords. The impression, that means how people actually see your post. Then they'll tell you, okay, because this is a sponsored post, so you have to ask yourself, like, what are the how many percentage are being seen by promotion and what is organic? Who is really following you? So you know, okay, 220 people actually watch your post. So these are the impressions. So 200 plus. 
So ten percent from promotion because I promote this post. So how many hours has been a promotion? Is important. So, uh, I this is the paid one. I show you the organic one because the organic one more, 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 more impactful lah. Okay, again, this is another post. They will tell you how many you have reached, how many visits. Okay, say this part. From others, from home, from hashtag, from uh, uh from. Uh, from profile. Okay, so they tell you. Okay, out of these three hundred people, right? How many people came from your home and see your home as in your the normal feed? Okay, then for where do they see your stuff on your profile? They miss this post. Do they see from your profile, or did they find you from your hashtags? And this hashtag is important because like that you know that oh okay that means they came from hashtags. That means your hashtag actually works. It, that means four people actually came from the hashtag itself. They don't even follow me, but they see based on the hashtag. And this is where I'm saying that you are planting seeds in the different crops because these are the people that they don't even follow you. They see your post and they are interested and they actually engage to it. And that's what we want in Instagram is to get the attraction, not sell stuff to get the attraction. So uh, this is just a very quick skim through of how you measure like, and that's how I personally measure my statistics and results. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going a little bit over the top. This is like every day 11, but I want to continue to go through first. Okay, so uh, before we go into this very motivational story time, I wanted to kind of share the share this uh, Facebook group. So uh, as you know, we are having this community group, uh, this crop for people to learn video marketing. So this Video Marketing Academy uh, is in this QR code. Do scan this if you if you are watching through a phone and unable to do so. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I will give you the the link to it. So it's called the Video Marketing Academy. You can easily find it on Facebook. Uh, I share weekly stuff also. It's uh, uh, similar to the email list, but uh, more in depth because email can really be that much. But Facebook, I can really talk more and they have like stories. You know, like Facebook now have stories also, not just Instagram. Facebook have stories. Same applicable. So okay. Uh, I will close this first and I will go to uh, go to story time. Okay, so this this story is about uh, laziness and if you are if you are if you are lazy right you can't get things done. Okay, so in the ancient time there's this king right? he is uh, able to uh, get his men to put a rock on the middle of a road. Then what people usually do is they walk around it. All the rich people they will just complain to the king and say, Hey, why you put this rock on the road? Like what's the point? You're just blocking people's way. Then like uh, then there's this one day, right? There's this peasant, this poor little guy. He was carrying this two huge basket of vegetables, then he's just walking, walking, walking. Then suddenly he see the piece of rock there. <clears throat> he put down his heavy vegetables, he pushed the rock away. Then he oh, used all his strength and push. Then he managed to push away the rock. Then he wanted to he push away to the side of the road. He go back to take his vegetables. Then suddenly he see, eh, why the why there's a pouch there, like where original where the rock was right. He actually go and open. Then he's like, wow, a lot of gold, eh, a lot of gold coin. Amazing. I was like, wow. Then he go and there's a note inside the bag of gold. He say. Uh, it's actually written by the king. So the king will uh, thank the person whoever that shifted the rock will get this reward. So what I want to share in this like moral story right, is don't complain in the situation where you're in, especially now in COVID, don't just blame the whole world, no? uh, blame this virus, no? blame this, blame that, blame the government uh, for doing that and not doing anything about it. If you are gonna be like the rich people that complain and stuff and walk around it and keep complaining, nothing will get done. Do something about it, you know. Do plan your things, you know, strategize your work, uh, spend the time that you're complaining into putting this, you know, the change of your life. Everybody's facing change is normal. And I want to motivate you through this story. So I hope this story helps you. And comment below what's that one thing that you learned today. That could really help you in your video business or basically your business itself. Uh, if not, this is the Q and A session, and uh, 
if you are not sure, I usually put this at the back to really let you uh, Q&A and ask me like which part that you're not sure, I'll go through briefly again. Uh, or if you have things that you want to implement for your business but you're not sure, it's not just about IG, it could be anything under the sun for video marketing. And let me know what are the things that you want me to cover for the following week. Yeah, uh, what are the things you're interested on? Like, uh, is it YouTube or is it Facebook? Uh, recently, I did a video on uh, Facebook for uh, Facebook for how to create an uh, email list. Uh, and next week, I'm going to fit, talk about that uh, through the YouTube video. So it's not really a live stream, but if you want me to go through in the live stream, let me know what you guys are looking for. Yeah, and uh, if not, I would, while I'm waiting for you to comment, right, I do have the Curious Sunday things that I want to uh, cover. Uh, that I asked, uh, there was one guy that asked about uh, insurance, travel and automotive uh, industry and how we should, how he should do to create an email list. So uh, because they are very sales driven industry uh, and what I given him was like <clears throat> uh, create personalized emails because the question is really is Right after they got the email, then what should they do? Because they cannot just leave it there. So I say create personalized emails, you know, birthday emails, uh, make sure that your people are being remembered. Yep, Tatiana, yep. Uh, important thing is to, you know, have fun doing the process, uh, learn through the, you know, it's really about social. Lah. Social media is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be stressful and like, I don't know what to create. Thanks, 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 Mary. Uh, I always try to motivate people with stories. I'm a storyteller. So I, I always feel that story can make you ingrain better. If, I, if I'm just going to say laziness will lead you nowhere, then you will just like, oh, okay. Lor. But if I add this story, then you will have you will better remember it. Lah. So I hope that helps. Yeah, so for the email list for insurance, travel, those solopreneurs kind of thing, uh, make sure that you are very customized. Uh, you able to customize the emails and I particularly highlight the travel because now travel seems to be impossible. So what I say, if you cannot just, you can just leave your audience like that. So what I do is, why not you tell them like what are the procedures agencies are taking or what your agencies are doing to make sure that your customers are in safe hands. Recently, SIA did the video about resuming travel in futures and what are the measurements that take. Which is good. They're not even selling tickets. They're just telling you that, hey, uh, by, by the way, if once flight resumes, these are the things that we're going to do. We'll make it as safe as possible. And that is what people are thinking right now. Safety. You have to think of what are the customers thinking. Create a video or create something that can explain that. Then that would help people better understand. It's not like they are solving a problem. They're just sharing something. And I think the approach is very organic. Because they're not selling tickets and that's the best part. And that's the beauty of what SIA did was they're not trying to be in the sales position. They're trying to think of a consumer, like what consumer are you worried about? If I want to get them to fly, they're actually worried about the safety. Like, will they get the virus? And what you guys are doing to ensure that I won't get the virus. So, you see, this is, the, this is the beauty part about the social media. Yeah, so this is one of those uh, Q&A that I got uh, last Sunday. Then um, the I will just briefly go through one last question, which is, uh, can video be edited uh, on mobile as, as effective as uh, editing software? That's being asked by Angela. Uh, the answer is yes, because again, quality doesn't win the value that you give, depend on the content. So work on the content itself, edit through your phone or editing software, whichever platform, that works as good as a well-edited film. It does work. So uh, if you guys have no questions, then that actually marks the end of the podcast. Let me know what you want to learn next week so that I could prepare from this week to next week onwards that I could let you guys be attending. If not, I will actually help you guys uh, choose the next topic, which is most likely Facebook. Uh, I, I'm assuming people would want to learn Facebook, so I would go into Facebook and see how much I can deep dive. Lah. So every week, Thursday, 10 to 11. I hope to see you next week, 10 to 11. Let's get Creative Podcast Live. Ends here.
Yep, so this marks the end of the podcast. Uh, again, very thankful for you guys to join. I uh, really appreciate you guys and I hope you guys learn a lot. Yeah, so uh, do continue to comment if you have and I'll see you next time. Bye!